Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I thought I'd do a little video on the antenna setup here at the station and also an update on the antenna tuner box. It's been about eight months that it's been in service now and uh, it's operated pretty much flawless with the exception of one little issue that I'll show you a little bit later in the video. So first right here, we have the, this is the coax up to the 80 meter off center fed dipole. Goes up into the top of that tree about 40 feet and then the longer wire of it extends across the yard over to that metal pole in the backyard. So you can see the wire up there. It's not too high up. Uh, at the end where that pole is, is only about 10 feet. Off the ground uh, in the tree, it's, it's about 40. So then over here is the 43 foot telescoping vertical by MFJ. Uh, you can see one of the guy ropes I have coming down off of that. Uh, I ended up actually not really needing them once I staked the base of the mast better. I just haven't gotten around to removing the guy ropes off of there. But anyways, let's take a look at the match boxes over here. So right here is the first match box that I had made for this antenna. Uh, this is not my design. This I found on the Alpha Delta 5 X-Ray website. Uh, he's got a real nice article on there. Uh, presentation on a tuner box uh, but there it is you can see it's got a, a fixed inductor in there and uh, it's got a ballon and also a 4 to 1 transformer and then there's two pretty heavy duty relays in there and a, um, a DC bias circuit so it's fed the voltage over the coax and then depending on if you feed it positive 12 negative 12 or 0 uh, will decide which relay or combination of relays is, is actuated. And this worked pretty good. Um, it's got a setting for 80 meters and 40 meters and then the rest of the the, uh, the bands you just use the tuner and the shack for. Alright, and then over here is our remote control one. You'll see I built a little quarter wave 2.4 gigahertz antenna on it. I was having some range issues reaching the house. It's about uh, a little over 100 feet away on the outside to the house and then my Wi-Fi router is about another 20 feet in the house on top of that. So it makes it a little, uh, little challenging to get the signal out here. Anyways, let me get you a little bit better angle on it here. And we'll open it up. And um, what I'm going to do is I'll go inside and I'm going to record in there while I'm operating the radio and I'll leave this video going and uh, I'll, I'll try to do like a picture in picture and then you can see the tuner in action as I'm controlling it from inside the shack. Okay, here we are inside the shack and uh, I've got the 7100 fired up and then the interface for the tuner up on the computer there. Uh, over here we got our manual antenna tuner which I have uh, set to bypass right now. And then this uh, nice big easy to read MFJ meter up here. So what I'm going to do is I'll start out by, uh, let's go to 20 meters. And then actually I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell the antenna tuner to go to the home position on here. So that we got that on video and that will help me kind of sync up the video. So I typed in home. I'm going to send it the command. And actually, it may have already even been in the home position. Just refresh it here. Yep, home successful. Okay, so now the way I typically operate this is uh, I have a notepad file that I made all my notes on of which uh, what the settings are for each band. Uh, so now these ones up here were some some earlier numbers, and down here is the more updated values. So you can see my most recent one for 20 meters. I set the inductor to 1000 and the capacitor to 135. Uh, so prior to doing that, let's just see where we're at. So I'll go to AM. So we got a carrier. And, uh, well, turn the power down to about 50%. And we'll go over here and key up and show you where we're at. Okay, so that's our. Our starting SWR definitely isn't great, <laughs> and uh, 
We'll set it to the 20 meter position. So let's see, what was, what was our setting? 1000 and 135. So I set that to 1000. You'll hear the re receive come up. That was what, 135? We said 135. Boom, and just like that, we're configured for 20 meters. And then we'll show you the SWR. Now, look at that. Tune around the band a little bit. So as you can see, it, it works really well. Okay, so there you have it. Um, and actually, we can compare it to the dipole. So I can switch over to my dipole here. Surprisingly, on a dipole, I actually have a higher noise level, but the signals tend to be stronger on the vertical. Okay, now we're going to go to uh, 40 meters. Now you can hear how quiet it is because we're not tuned. And we'll show you our starting SWR. Really high again. We'll set it to the 40 meter position, which is uh, inductor at 10,000 and capacitor at 152. Um, now there's a couple different ways I can control it. I can tell it how far to move from where it's at, which is that command right there, or I can I can do the command like before where I tell it the exact position. So we're already at 1,000. If I do 9,000, that'll put us at 10. So I'll issue that command. And you'll hear the receive start to come up. And then our capacitor we want at 152. All right, and we should be set. Did it not send the command? Oh, there we go, it just took a second. The inductor must have still been spinning. So there, there you see it. And the signals have come up considerably. And then we'll show you 80 meters real quick. Or 75 meters. Some people will be technical with me out there. I know it. But as you can see, the SWR is quite high to start with. We'll set it to the 80 meter position, which uh, my most recent numbers are going to be 6650 and a capacitor position of 3. And we should be all set. Now look at that. And now, uh, I mean, it looks like it's still kind of high, but that's something with this MFJ meter. They did not do a great job of calibrating it from the factory. You'll notice if you compare it to the one below, uh, this is showing a significantly better SWR than this one is. Um, and this one actually agrees with the radio. So on here, we're you know we're looking at about a 1.1. And if I compare that to what the radio is showing on its SWR screen, it looks comparable. You know, and that's, uh, we're at a pretty decent power level there. About 15 watts. Yeah. 
And now I mentioned there was one little quirk, and I'll show you what that is. Let's go to 15 meters. Uh, it doesn't seem to have this problem on the lower bands, but uh, on the upper, like 15 and 10, it does sometimes. So if I look at my 15 meters, I want inductor position at 2100 and a capacitor at 60. So we're going to do that. Set the inductor to 2100. You can hear the static come up a little bit while the motor's spinning. And then the capacitor to 60. All right, and we should be all tuned on, on 15. You can see RSWR looks great. But now here's the, here's the kicker. If I turn on the amplifier, I've already got that previously tuned up on this band and everything. Uh, so if I, I got the amplifier on now. You'll see the SWR will be good, and then I'm going to unkey the radio, and you'll hear the static is raised up. That's the, the tuner resetting the home. So there it's good. Now you hear the static, and it shut off. There the motor's homing, and now the SWR is high. Uh, so for some reason, uh, I shouldn't say for some reason, I know what it is. The RF is just so much in there that I think it messes up the clock on the, the microcontroller. And... Uh, it basically reboots the antenna tuner. So that's a, a small little issue and uh, that'll be dealt with once we get the electronics put in an RF hardened enclosure inside of there. You get some metal around them or something, but for the initial uh, testing, I've been pretty happy with it. Uh, what, what I do if I'm gonna run high power on say 15 meters or 10 meters is I, uh, I get the antenna set to where I want and then I just disconnect the DC power from it in here so that it can't move outside. And uh, I might as well show that. By the way, here is the uh, the DC bias box where I feed the power in. It's just got a power cord coming out of it that goes to the power supply and then the two coax. So uh, real nice design. I actually got this off the AD5X uh, website. I built this originally for that other tuner box. So. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I'll have some more updates on the tuner coming soon. I'm going to try to make it a point to get the plans for it up there so that people can start building these if they want. Alright, thanks for watching.